it is only beneficial for the US. Europe is suffering from sanctions more than Russia. These are Ukraine and USA that should be blamed in energy crisis. Ukraine should surrender for faster peace. Sounds familiar? Add to that such internal messages like everything is under control, we're getting stronger with sanctions, we are fighting against all the NATO countries, and you will receive the whole picture of Russian propaganda nowadays. While the local propagandists bark at internal market, there are still loyal speakers abroad that preach the word of Putin all over the world. Isn't it interesting, who are they? Are they so stupid in reality? And what else do they do with the same mouth? The big three of Russian internal propaganda are Solovyov, Kiselov and Skabeva. All three work in so-called television shows, where they earn millions for lying, spreading hate and some enormous level of stupidity. Dmitry Kiselov exists to remind on air that Russia has nuclear weapons and everyone should be scared. He also owns the state informational agency, but it loses popularity so fast that even nuclear threats don't stop people from switching switching it off. Vladimir Solovyov is famous for his antics and grimaces. Also, he calls himself great karate expert, but altogether it can do nothing except be amusing to death. He used to reach broad audiences before the 24th of February, but since then more often he is sitting upset and moans, telling about gestures of goodwill. Olga Skabeva works on TV together with her husband. They have a son, too young now to denounce his parents. Her role is speaking with mouth about 1000 shot Bayraktars and other unlikely patriotic news. There are also less significant propagandists, but these three are the most popular repetitors of government fake messages. They tell wonderful fairy tales about Russian heroes, weak West and NATO countries that can't defeat mighty Russia. Thanks to wise Putin, of course. Whether they believe themselves in claptrap they tell or not, they receive large sums of money for their work. And if history indeed repeats itself, they will be the first torn apart by angry so-called Russian people. And what about those who spread Russian lies abroad? Are they also well paid? Or just enthusiasts supporting cowardly lying rapists and murderers? Graham Phillips, the UK citizen famous for his work in Russia Today and Zvezda channel, owned by Russian Ministry of Defense. After numerous scandals with his loyal attitude to the Kremlin, Phillips tried himself in British politics, but failed. So he continues to send air kisses to his patrons in Russian Ministry of Defense via his YouTube channel, where he calls himself a journalist. Viktor Orban Prime Minister of Hungary. He's in love with Russia so much that Hungarians should ask themselves, whose Prime Minister is he? Calls himself the Trojan horse of Putin in EU. So together with Lavrov, there's a whole stable. Advertises collapse of United Europe, but enjoy the financial and diplomatic EU benefits. Steven Seagal. Despite he received Russian passport as well as Sasha Gray and some other actors, he is the only one who took it seriously and started working off. Now he broke Sasha Gray's record in adult videos, shooting for such hardcore shorties as Meet Putin and Visit to Olenivka Colony. No nominations as it was poorly played. There are still many Putin minions around the world. Some of them hold positions, some don't. But all of them try to keep a safe harbor far from Moscow, hoping that the splash of Putin's briefcase ultimately will not reach them. Though it is always easy to recognize their voice. They will say that national interests are more important than moral values, they will blame the victim, they will operate with financial interests watching murders on air. But their voice is always trembling because of the Kremlin's hand inside.